y haría My friends, welcome to this tutorial about creating games with Solaris. Today, I will introduce the sprite editor. What is a sprite in Solaris? Um, here is an example of sprites. This is the doctor from Doctor Who. Um, sprites are animated pictures, like, uh, like a GIF or a GIF, as you prefer. I don't want to enter this debate, but sprites can be used to display typically entities on the map, but also things that don't necessarily belong to the map, but are directly displayed on the screen. For example, um, the hero is a sprite, and actually he's even multiple sprites because he's complicated, he has a sword and stuff. The doctor here is um, uh, he's a non-playing character represented by a sprite, same for this enemy, he is also represented by a sprite. Same for the teletransporter and the destination here. Um, but as I was saying, not only map entities can use sprites, but uh, these hearts, I think, are displayed also as sprites. Um, so anything that you want to draw on, on the screen can be a sprite, especially when they are animated. Um, so if you double click the, the, any of these entities, uh, there is always this sprite checkbox and combo box where you can uh, select what sprites you want to use to represent your entity. But as I was saying, some entities can even have multiple sprites. It's the case of the hero, for example, because he has uh, a main sprite for his body and another sprite for the sword and even the shield, and even more things than that, usually. Um, you can check the documentation about the hero for more information, but it's it's good to know that entities can have zero, one, or even multiple sprites. And this is very useful, for, for example, with the hero. When the hero collides with uh, an enemy, for example, the engine will check which sprite exactly of the hero uh, did collide with the enemy and if it is the body sprite then the hero will be hurt usually but if it is a sword sprite that is overlapping the enemy then it's the enemy who will be hurt so yeah multiple sprites can be used for entities even though most of the time for regular entities there is only one. Um, so you can open any sprite from the sprites folder here with the sprite editor. Usually it looks like that. A sprite is uh, usually a, P a PNG file and some meta information. So, for example, for the doctor from Doctor Who that we used in previous tutorials, we have this PNG file, and we have this the doctor.dat file, which is the sprite itself, and it contains all meta information useful to animate the sprite correctly. So, a sprite is composed of one or more animations. For non-playing characters, usually, you will have the animations called stopped and walking and any animation is uh, again divided in one or multiple directions and for non-playing characters the usual is to have of course four directions so we have four directions for the stopped animation and four directions for the walking animation and then you have all parameters necessary to uh, to describe the animation, mm, especially the delay between frames here. You can use this this preview window and click the play button to see how your an working animation looks like. Um, for the stop animation, of course, nothing happens because it's a bit of the special animation that only has one frame. Um, but yeah, it's it's very useful for animations that are that have more than one frame and here you have the properties uh, basically the coordinates in the PNG file 
where your your frames are located so you specify the, the size of run frame here and its position in the PNG for example if you select direction up here um, its position will be 0 0.32 you can display the grid if you want um, and it's good to create a grid to show a grid that has the same uh, coordinates as uh, your sprite itself and number of frames I will talk about the origin later um, okay so all sprites are organized like that with one or more animations and one or more directions as I was saying the hero sprite really has a lot of animations um, for example, this stopped animation refers to ldran.png, but spin attack refers to another PNG. Even if it's the same sprite, uh, it's possible that s different animations use different PNG files. And on the contrary, it's also possible that multiple sprites refer to the same PNG file. For example, uh, this teletransporter sprite here. So the the green one will refer to teletransporter.png but uh, the other variants like pink and yellow they also refer to the same PNG just with different coordinates so this is an animated teletransporter and only one PNG file so really it's kind of flexible you, you can do you can organize your, your sprite PNG sheets uh, pretty much as you want. I always recommend to avoid very big PNG files because at some point if there are, if there are multiple contributors you will have conflicts and it, it will be harder to uh, remember who is the, the author of, of a big PNG files if, if you make a big PNG file with a lot of different things inside. But yeah, the simple case is one PNG for one sprite and everything is, is good like this. You even have some uh, sprites for uh, the logos that show up when, when you start your game. Solaris logo, for example. This is what you see when you, you start Solaris by default. Um, okay, so let's try to create a sprite from from an existing PNG file so I will just import from Zelda XD2 which you can download on our website website and we will get the sprite from back to the future the sprite from um, doc Emmett Brown so again you have a dot that file and a PNG file so if you are lazy you can pick both but if you want to learn how to create a sprite just pick the PNG and we will try to recreate uh, more or less the same that uh, file from the PNG okay so I did the import I can see my PNG file here using the import feature also uh, allows to get the information by the author and license so that's always what I recommend. Um, sorry, NPC, okay, BTTF means Back to the Future, and we will so we will create a new sprite in that in that folder with why not the same name as the PNG. Um, Doc Emmett Emmett Brown, I'm the author, and the license will be Creative Commons okay so I did create an empty sprite for now it has no animation no nothing so uh, not very useful let's create an animation here um, yeah so it will be very similar to to the one from the doctor here it's organized the same way with a stopped and a walking animation so I will start with with a stopped animation. Okay, and to so now I have an animation, but it has no direction inside. So the easiest way to create a direction 
uh, you could you could do it from here but you can also trace a rectangle here like in the tileset editor and new direction okay and it created a direction zero so the convention is in solaris is always that zero is the direction uh, to the right and then you you turn counterclockwise so it's like in math which means one will be up this one and then two will be left and then three will be down um, okay let's let's show the grid actually and you can see that it is 16 by 32 I can create my second oops my second frame by also tracing a new rectangle here and pressing new direction or I can duplicate this one actually by dragging it and clicking duplicate here and if you do that it's quite quick to create your four directions and as you notice as soon as you have four directions the sprite editor uh, adds right up left down um, as a comment here because it's the convention if there is only if there are only three directions then well we are not in in a four direction system as far as the engine can guess so it will not show anything but if there is four directions then it shows the convention i think it also works if you create eight direction then you will have the diagonal ones um okay so yeah it's important that you start with direction zero being being right being the right direction and then all default parameters should be okay mm, it's just a one frame sprite here for the stopped animation so you don't really care about frame delay since there is only one frame let's create the second direction which will be this time walking okay uh, one way to do it is to select the first frame and this time we can you can click new multi-frame direction and you can drag your rectangles uh, until you're happy so i'm stopping here and i have my direction um, and this time i will need to set uh, a correct delay here between frames because i have more than one frames if you look at another sprite like the doctor the delay is 200 milliseconds so it's likely that for another npc it should look good and you will loop on frame zero so once the last frame is reached and after that frame it will loop back to the first one um, you can preview here that you are happy with the animation if you don't loop then it will animate only once and then it will just stop so obviously here we want to loop but sometimes there are some situations where we don't want that and then to create your other directions you can just drag here and okay I let yeah I'm 8 pixels too much to, to the south here so let's just move it here and duplicate again and we we again have our four directions if anything is incorrect you can always change the numbers manually here the size of rectangles the position in the file in the png file and the frames so now i think we should have a usable sprite let's change these this npc and this time instead of the doctor we will put doc and okay there we go we have our our doc from back to the future let's test the map so obviously he pretends it's doctor who because of the previous tutorial but that's not the <laughs> the problem here um, yeah so it works one thing that is uh, very important and source of error is how do you 
um, configure the fact that a sprite can have any size and actually the entity also have its own size here so this green rectangle when I select the doctor is really the the physical part let's say of the character so when he moves and it's the same for enemies or for any entity um, he will blocked uh, he will be blocked when this 16 by 16 green square uh, hits a wall so as you can see the the head here and, and the hair are overlapping the wall but not the the bounding box the green bounding box here um, it's exactly the same for for the player himself if you go here the your, your hair is actually overlapping but your real size is a little bit smaller than than your sprite the real size is 16 by 16. It, it is also configurable but by default it's 16 by 16 and it's good uh, so yeah it means that despite the fact that the entity on the map has a physical size of 16 by 16 the sprite of that same entity can be bigger and there is really no problem with that and it usually is bigger um, and the only question is how does the engine know that um, that it's the top part of the sprite who who should be uh, above here and not for example the the feet that would be below and here 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 comes the notion of origin point so any sprite any animation any direction always have this origin point property and it's used as a synchronization point to uh, define where, where are the feet actually of an NPC or or an, of a monster of or the hero any entity always has this origin point and its sprite its sprites also have one so actually here when you double click your NPC you can see the position is 200 and 300 uh, and one actually it's because the origin point of the entity uh, is here so exactly here the convention is uh, in the in the middle of the X coordinate in the middle of the width of your entity and three pixels from the bottom so one two three something like here is 200 and 301 apparently pixels you can see the coordinates here of your mouse um, there are always um, uh, snaps to 8 pixels in in this display here but 301 is pretty much here so that's the origin point that's called the origin point of our entity here of the the physical box of the entity and since our origin point in the sprite file uh, is exactly this place then it works it's the, the so yeah the convention is always to put it at uh, half the size half the width and three pixels from the bottom and uh, actually this this was in initialized by default when i created my animations i didn't talk about it but uh, by default it's initialized the origin to 8 which is half of 16 and 32 minus 3 which is 29 if you put a wrong origin here you will have very random results so i'm putting 0 and 0 on purpose and let's see what happens if i reload my first map here um, so far it still looks good did i save ah it's because i only changed the walking animation so let's let's break the, the stopped animation and not, not the walking animation so i'm putting a very bad origin point on purpose 
here I'm I'm telling the sprite editor that the feet of my doctors of my doctor are here in the top left corner of the rectangle. So obviously it is completely wrong. And let's see the result in in the map. I can show the grid. My entity, my physical entity, is still here. It, it has not moved at all. But just the sprite. Uh, since I said that the origin point is on the top left of of my uh, sprite rectangle, then it remember that it's half of the width and uh, three pixels from the bottom. So somewhere here is uh, considered to be the the origin point. And since my sprite decided that the origin point is there, then it is displayed uh, yeah, much to the bottom and, and to the right. So if you ever encounter this kind of issues where your sprite seems completely off uh, from where it should be, usually it's because your origin point is wrong. So let's put it to 8 and 29 again. And reload the map because I don't think it detected the change. The change, and now we are back to a correct displaying. Okay. Um, so to to recap this notion of origin, there is an origin point for the physical entity here, um, and for NPCs by default, it's like I said. They have a size of 16 by 16, and the origin is 8, uh, 13. And if your sprite is bigger than that, then the origin of your sprite should sync, should be uh, synchronized with that convention here. You could change the convention from from Lua code, but we will not see that today. Um, okay, so this origin can really save you when you have a sprite of a different size than its entity and also simply when you have an entity with multiple i mean a sprite with multiple different animations who all have different sizes so back to our good old hero which is a perfect example of complicated sprite here the top animation is organized in frames of 24 by 24 with the origin here always the feet and if I pick another animation whose uh, frame size is much bigger, again, it's only the origin point that uh, allows you to get back on your feet. And after this awesome joke, I think uh, I've said everything that I wanted to cover. If you have any question, please join our Discord. I hope this was helpful. Thank you all for watching and see you next time. Bye.